If you're looking at buying an enameled Dutch oven, stick around, this one's for you. I spent $1,642 on 12 of the most popular Dutch ovens to basically destroy them just so I could see how they compared to one another. I found that most other Dutch oven reviews don't actually buy and test the products that they're reviewing, which is completely worthless. So I'm here to give you an unbiased review using actual tests on the 12 most popular Dutch ovens so you can see the difference. For these tests, we only wanted to focus on very specifically enameled cast iron Dutch ovens that were somewhere between five and six quarts and generally in the round shape. This being kind of the most popular size and shape for enameled Dutch ovens. It's important to note that all the items we tested were ordered online. So either from Amazon or directly from the company's websites. There are a few points of differentiation in the Dutch ovens that I tested that I want to tell you about. Here's what we focused on. Weight and thickness, enamel durability, design and shape considerations, price and customer service and support. I've decided to not include any actual cooking tests in my evaluation of these Dutch ovens because what I've found is that there's no quantifiable difference with the cooking properties between these Dutch ovens. They're all made of enameled cast iron. So it's the same material. We're not talking about using cookware of different materials and testing them against one another. The other thing is they're all generally about the same thickness. So since they're the same material and the same thickness, we can figure out and we can even see on the thermal imaging that they're not actually gonna apply heat differently to the food that they're cooking. So I heated these empty pots over a burner and watched them with a thermal camera to see the differences in the properties between them. And what I found was essentially no difference in the way that they dealt with heat over time. There really wasn't any quantifiable difference viewing that with the thermal camera so that we can then understand that as you translate this into real cooking situations, provided that the heat that you're using is consistent between the tests, no one is ever gonna be able to find or figure out any differences in actual cooking between the different Dutch ovens in this test. All right, so we're gonna be testing the enamel in two different ways. So for testing the exterior enamel, we're gonna be using this enamel whacking contraption that can deliver consistent force to the outside of the pot. And for the inside, we're gonna be using these steel balls, dropping them at consistent heights to test the durability of the interior enamel. So after the first impact test, there were four of the Dutch ovens out of the initial 12 that completely failed the first test. Um, so that was the Milo, um, our Amazon generic pot, the Tramontina, and the Amazon Basics. So these failed um, literally on the first hit. So one thing I wanna point out is that with our enamel whacking device, we are putting way more force into these things than you would typically see in day-to-day -day use with cast iron. We wanted to go to this level to just be able to find those differences in enamel durability. And I think with this first test, we're definitely seeing some differences. What this may mean you know, to me is that in the long run, cast iron cookware is going to go through some bumps and bangs in the kitchen during every Day use, whether it's going you know, in and out of the sink, hitting other cookware, bumping it into a granite countertop, things like that, uh, this, is, this is replicating those forces. If we're able to see a difference of enamel cracking and flaking off more easily on some of them, that would lead me to believe that the long-term durability of that enamel uh, in terms of just having more chips and cracks. So we're gonna move on and do some tests on the interior enamel durability. All right, so to test the interior enamel, we're gonna be dropping these steel balls at various heights uh, to test the durability. After interviewing a number of chefs, we found that there was a couple design considerations that they kept noting as important. So here's some things to think about. Having a larger flat area on the bottom of the pot makes it easier to brown meat and sear ingredients. Sloping bowl-shaped pots were not quite as good at this task. Most chefs preferred a light color interior to help monitor the food cooking inside. A lot of other reviews call for large loop handles on a pot. Now, my opinion on this is basically that out of all the pots that I tested and heated, I didn't have any trouble holding or gripping the pot with oven mitts, no matter the size of the handles. Are, are bigger handles easier to hold? Maybe very, very slightly. Probably not that important. 
Just go with whatever you think looks best. Low walls. It's also been noted that when working inside of a pot, having lower walls makes it a little bit easier to access the food and move things around. So for our test, what we found is that the wall height on all these Dutch ovens was very, very similar, within probably about three quarters of an inch within almost all of the Dutch ovens we tested. So it's not really something to worry about because most of the Dutch ovens were pretty much exactly the same on wall height anyway. One thing we found is that not every lifetime warranty is created equal. Every brand had a different interpretation of what is covered. Some brands were completely unresponsive, while others deferred to Amazon to do the customer service. The biggest learning from our research is to avoid buying a Dutch oven from Amazon and buy it directly from the manufacturer. Amazon is not set up to offer lifetime warranties and generally doesn't offer returns or exchanges beyond the 90 day window. There's a bit too much to cover here on how all the warranties differ from one another. So if you want to dig in, check out the warranty section in the article linked below. If you're looking to spend as little as possible while still getting an enameled cast iron Dutch oven, buy the Amazon Basics over the Lodge. Here's why. Amazon Basics did a phenomenal job exactly copying the design and shape of the Lodge Dutch oven. When you put these two pots next to each other, they look identical. That said, the Lodge did show a little bit better durability on the exterior enamel in our testing, but that point alone isn't enough to justify twice the price for the Lodge Dutch oven. So if you're looking to save money, buy the Amazon Basics over the Lodge. For the overall pick, I would recommend both the Trimontina and the Marquette Castings Dutch ovens. The Trimontina had a great array of colors, favorable design and shape characteristics, and a really good price point. Buying from the Trimontina website is the same price as Amazon, and you will get better warranty support and service if you buy directly from them. The Marquette Castings is a little bit more expensive, but tested far better in terms of enamel durability, and had very similar design and shape characteristics. It actually measured slightly larger at 6.1 quarts versus the Trimontina's 5.3. The Marquette Castings also has by far the most lenient warranty policy of any Dutch oven we tested. Replacing cookware even if damage is caused by the customer. If you want to buy the Staub or the Lee Cusay and don't mind paying for it, I would not steer you away from these options. Both were great Dutch ovens and above average when it comes to their durability and appearance of the enamel finishes. Between the two, I would just recommend that you pick the design that you like better as they are pretty significantly different in terms of their shape and how they look. The Lee Cusay is a fair bit more expensive, so take that into consideration as well. Don't expect spending the extra money to make you a better chef because our tests showed that there's no difference in terms of how any of these Dutch ovens actually cook food. If you do decide to go with the expensive French brands, I would not recommend that you buy them online. The Lee Cusay took forever to ship, even though I purchased it from Amazon, and the warranty and support on both brands is far less than what you would expect for an ultra premium product. This is really hard to make a recommendation because all of the pots in our test were all very, very similar. So let me start with a couple that I just would not recommend. The first one I would not recommend is the Great Jones. This is quite a bit more expensive than anything else we've tested. The oval shape is a little odd. Wouldn't really recommend an oval shape. In terms of the, the quality, the enamel color, durability and everything, it just, it did not stand out and justify that increase in price uh, over almost all the other options. So Great Jones, I would, would not recommend this large oval Great Jones Dutch oven for those reasons. I think there's better options for less money. Number two, the Meesen, same reason. Um, this is just cost too much. Uh, there's no reason that it should cost a lot more than anything else we tested. Got this funny pink interior. The enamel colors that it comes in just are pretty uninspiring. Um, it did seem to be pretty durable. It's a little bit bigger and heavier than some of the others in the test. Um, inter interior enamel didn't really hold up any, any better than, uh, than the others. So overall, it's just not really worth the extra money. And this is significantly more expensive at $160 uh, than the other products we've tested. So two right off the bat, I can say you can avoid Meeson and Great Jones. If you're looking for more details on any of the tests we performed, check out the full article in the link below. If you're looking for more cast iron videos or cookware comparison, please subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.